All right, so today I'm going to do a transmission flush on my car. It's my daily driver. I drive this about 40 miles each way to work. And so I've got six gallons of Dexron 3 automatic transmission fluid. Now this vehicle uses Mercon 5. I've got 15 ounces of LubeGuard Green. Now this will convert your Dexron 3 to act like Merc on 5. And I've been using this for years. I've never had any problems with it. I've used it in my uh, Ford Explorers, my Mercury Mountaineer. Never had a problem with it whatsoever. So let's go ahead and start by making sure the car is supported. So I've got this up in my garage right now and make sure that you have jack stands so that you can get underneath the car adequately. So uh, both of the tires are supported on jack stands. And then we can get to the bottom of the transmission down here. You can barely see it, but there it is. AX4N metric. So we'll go ahead and uh, pull the pan and drain the fluid. But before we do that, we want to try to pump out all the excess fluid that is already in the transmission. So I'll show you how to do that. The first thing we need to do is determine, might be kind of hard to see, but there's two cooler lines down here. Yeah, it's really dark. There's one right here. And then the second one right here. One is the uh, pressure out of the transmission that goes up to the cooler that's in the radiator and maybe even ahead of the radiator, depending on what cooling system you have. And then the other one is the return line. Now, I'm not sure what is what on this one, but I'll show you how to find out. So we want to make some heat in the transmission. So go ahead and start the car up, put it in drive, and then power brake it with your foot on the brake. up to about 1500 to 2000 RPM. And what we're doing is we're making heat in the transmission right now. We'll put it back in park and we'll shut it off. Okay, so I've got a light on here so you can see a little bit better now. So after you've power braked it, come down here and just reach in and feel the two cooler lines. This one feels much warmer than this one. So this is going to be the return line. This is the one we're going to pull off the transmission to do our flush. All right, so we need to remove the clip, the retaining clip from the transmission line. Hopefully you can see this while I do it. Oh, sorry, it was out of focus, but there it is off. Next, we want to squeeze the duckbill connector together and pull the transmission cooler line out of the transmission. It doesn't look like it's very well focused right now. I guess it is. So, oh, my hands are going to get in the way. So this duckbell connector is this part that's turning right here, and that's what holds the line in place. And I'm going to squeeze in on this side and in on this side, and then pull the line out. Okay, so I went ahead and partially released it, and I'm just going to go ahead and whether you can see it or not, it's another story. Pull it out. I'm going to just let it dangle underneath the car there. You can see it's out of the connector now. And I've got a drain pan set up down here. And there's the end of it dripping right there. Actually, the fluid's not too bad. This fluid's got about 40,000 miles on it. It's still pretty red. But like I said, I use this mainly highway miles. So now, we got this car almost brand new. It had 19,000 miles on it. I did the first flush at 30,000, the second at 60, and then I waited because I got a different job. And so I put 40,000 miles on the last flush. I did it at 100, and now it's at just over 140 right now, so I'm ready for the next flush. Okay, so I've got the uh, cooler return line dangling down underneath the car right now, and I've got a piece of vinyl tubing connected to it with a hose clamp so it doesn't blow off inadvertently. And so I'm going to take that other end of the tubing and put it into my bucket so we can flush the fluid out of the transmission. Okay, so I've got my return line in the bucket and next I'm just going to start the car and let it pump out whatever's in the pan. There we go, it's pumping. Now when it starts to show bubbles, I know it's going to start sucking air, so I'll shut the car off at that point. And then we'll take the pan off, we'll put a new filter in it, 
and then we'll flush it with fresh fluid until it comes out bright red. There we go, I'm gonna shut the car off now. Okay, so that's how much fluid was in the pan. So there's probably three to four quarts in here right now. You can see how much is in the bottom of the bucket. Next we'll go ahead and loosen the bolts on the pan and drop it. And we'll take out whatever's left in the pan and we'll put a new filter in it. Alright, so next I'm just going to break loose these bolts. Okay, they're all loose. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and take out most of the bolts. And we're getting some drippage, which is good, that's what we want. And we'll take that last bolt out, and we'll go ahead and tip it down, and it should all run out the bottom now. We'll let most of it drain, and then we'll take out the last two bolts up here. All right, so the majority of it's out now. I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll pull the last two bolts out. And then I'm gonna very carefully just tip it down and let it run out the bottom of the pan. And then I'm gonna move my drain pan under the filter because it's dripping the most. And the pan is off. All right, now we'll remove the filter which is only held in place with a little gasket. And we can tip it up and let it drain out. Very good. Now we'll dispose of this responsibly at the oil recycling center. Okay, so this is one thing you want to look for. It's the magnet in the bottom of the drain pan. Now this is not the original Ford magnet, this is one that I've substituted. It's out of a microwave magnetron. It's much larger and much more powerful and is able to pick up many, many more particles of ferrous material than the original small Ford magnet they had in there. So if you uh, are doing this and you have a scrap microwave, I suggest you take the magnet out of the magnetron and use it. So what you want to look for is any large particles of metal, uh, bearing failure, stuff like that. If you see a fine, just like a powder of metal, that's nothing to be concerned about. So let's go ahead and take a look at that magnet material. So as you can see, it's very fine. There's almost no material on this magnet at all. No large particles. It's all very fine particulates basically and so we'll take a paper towel and we'll rub it across there it looks absolutely perfect I see nothing wrong with that so now we'll try to get it off of the pan there we go and now you can just go ahead and clean the magnet off Hopefully 
obviously it's still in view. So all nice and clean, we'll just set that aside. Okay, so now that we've got our magnet clean, we'll go ahead and remove the pan gasket. Now this gasket is a reusable gasket. So as long as it doesn't crack or break, we'll be able to reuse this gasket again and again and again. So just very carefully lift the gasket up until it's completely off the pan. And I just have paper towels. I'm just gonna go ahead and completely wipe it down. Hopefully you can still see it. I'll go over it a couple times with various paper towels just to make sure it's nice and clean and ready to reuse. There we go, got the pan gasket all cleaned up. Now we'll go ahead and clean the inside of the pan. Same strategy, just with the paper towel. Let's wipe the extremity first. And then we'll just go ahead and wipe out the inside of the pan. That's not that bad. All right, I'd say that's good. And then you'll see the dimple. Just go ahead and place the magnet back over the dimple. All right, let's go clean the bottom of the transmission now. Okay, so next I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe off the ceiling surface just to make sure it's nice and clean for the gasket. And now I'm just going to go ahead and blot lines in the transmission. And we're still getting some leakage out of here, probably out of the torque converter. It's probably draining very, very slowly, which is to be expected. Alright, that all looks really good. Now pay particular attention to where the filter goes. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the ceiling o-ring is still up in place. So I need to get a screwdriver and very carefully pry it out. So I want to very carefully pry and not score the walls at all. We don't want any leakage past that little ceiling o-ring. Almost out. There it's out. This one is the green O-ring. I think they have a green and either a brown or a gray on some of these cars. You won't reuse this. The new filter comes with a new ceiling O-ring, which we will go ahead and put in place right now. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I do have an original brand spanking Motorcraft FT-130 filter. Brand spanking new. There it is. Ready to go. It has the new ceiling o-ring already on it. And it's just a matter of pushing it up into place. And it just kind of hangs there. That should be good. Okay, let's go ahead and put the pan back on now. Okay, so without the gasket, I'm just going to go ahead and put it up here. Make sure it seals and it does. That way the filter I know is all the way in there. So I have a bolt ready to go. All right, there's one in.
Okay, now that all the bolts are in, we can go ahead and give them just a snug up. Okay, all good. All right, so let's torque these pan bolts back down. Uh, the torque spec is 8 foot-pounds, or 96 inch-pounds. So I've got my torque wrench set up to 96. Let's go ahead and put some fluid back in it now. All right, so I have my funnel in place. And before I start, I'm just gonna add four quarts of fluid or one gallon just to refill the pan. Okay, so I've already got four quarts in the transmission and I've got 16 quarts ready to go. Now the capacity of this transmission, according to LubeGuard, is 13.7 quarts. So once I start getting like the uh, 14th, 15th quart in there, it should start coming out very clean. So let's go ahead and we'll start it up and we will add the transmission fluid, hopefully as fast as it can pump it out so we get 100% clean flush. So let's go back over here to my drain pan. I'll get you focused on that, and then we'll go ahead and start the flushing process. All right, there it goes. It's starting to get jerky, it's starting to bubble. We'll shut the engine off now. Okay, so I've got 20 quarts of fluid flush through the transmission. You saw it was nice and bright red coming out of there. It's completely clean now. The torque converter's been flushed. The only remaining fluid might be an ounce or two in the valve body, but that is about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my 13.7 ounces of lube guard, and we'll go ahead and put about three quarts of Dexron 3 back in it, and we should be able to convert that fluid over to Mercon 5 with no problem. Like I said, I've been doing this. Um, this car's got 140,000 miles on it right now, and it's run nothing but Dexron 3 and Lube Guard its entire life. It shifts absolutely perfectly with no problem whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and add the Lube Guard now. So here's my first container of Lube Guard, 10 ounces. And so you want to use one ounce of Lube Guard per quart of Dexron 3 to convert it to Mercon 5. So this is 10 ounces. Just let that drain out. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the cooler line back into the transmission. All right, so I have five ounces left in this loop guard. I'm going to add approximately four of those. I don't think it's that critical. I'd say we got one ounce left in there now. Well, next we'll put the last four quarts in and we should be up to the full mark. This one in nice and slow because before we had the uh, drain port open on the transmission so the air could be displaced easily and quickly. Now that the transmission is sealed we have to pour it in much more slowly so that the air that the transmission fluid is displacing can come back up through the dipstick tube. So I got about three and a half quarts in there now. We'll go ahead and remove the funnel, replace the dipstick, We'll start it up and we'll check the level on the dipstick at this point.
Okay, I've run it through all the gears. And we are right to the top of don't add. So I think we're gonna be fine. Now keep in mind, the car is tilted slightly. So the dipstick tube is on the rear of the transmission. So it's gonna read a little higher than normal especially when it's back on the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the hood. We'll take this for a ride around the block and we'll check it on flat ground one more time. Okay, hopefully you can see this, but I'm just done with a nice ride around the block. Got the transmission up to temperature. We'll go ahead and pull the dipstick, wipe it off. We are right up to the top of the don't add if in this area, so it is perfectly fine. Look at that nice bright red fluid. We should be good for many more miles. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to flush your transmission at home with no special equipment. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.